Tie stitches are something that I cannot stress the importance of enough. They are a few stitches that stitch over themselves before you start sewing to lock that thread into place before you start that lovely satin stitch for the monogram that you just can't wait to get on your pillowcase. Um, the tie stitches are also the uh, stitches that go back and forth over themselves before a trim that give you a much cleaner trim, but they also keep that monogram from washing out of that pillowcase when you're done. So very, very important uh, tools, very, very important properties. Um, so let's look at those, look at the shapes of them. We'll figure out when to tie, how to tie, and kind of the shape of the tie stitch that we want to use, and then go from there. All right, so I'm going to just, uh, I'll put a name on screen. Meh, I'll do Melko again, why not? All right, so here is Melko. We've got it up here, and uh, I'm going to go into my properties, and I'm going to look at tie stitch. Now, uh, sorry, tie in and tie off. Now, these are on. Uh, I have mine on by default because, again, I think they're incredibly important. Um, but let's talk about which they are and, and how they work. So if these are unchecked, I'm not going to get them. So tie in, very important, that's the one that starts things off. Tie off, that's the one right before a trim, so you probably want to have that in there so stuff locks into place and you're not dragging a thread and it gets a good trim and it doesn't unravel. Tie in, again, at the start of an element, tie off at the end of an element. So let's look at enabling those. So when they have the check marks, that means they're enabled. The next property that you have available to you is what type of tie-in. And you have a very descriptive, you know, style one through style five. Now, that may not mean enough to you. So if you want a picture of what those are, you have that available in a drop down or a, a button down at the bottom of the screen called show tie types. So if I come down here and I hit show tie types, you can see what those ties do at least kind of you may need to see them sewn out a time or two um, just to kind of understand it but um, in, in looking at this uh, a style one is kind of a full forward half back full forward kind of thing a style two is just a stitch and the needle penetrations line up so if you're starting out with really long stitches these are going to be really long stitches so perhaps not an effective uh, tool for something like that that's really long like a satin stitch um, or, or a basting stitch or something like that probably not going to work so well for you style three is very similar to a style two in that the the holes line up so it's just one and then the next going backwards and then it will go forwards um, style four take a notice that it does hang outside of the element a little bit. So again, only if you're gonna be covering that up. Um, style five is kind of nice in that it goes in multiple directions. It kind of creates a little plus sign, um, a, a much more aggressive tie. So we've got a bunch of different options here. Some are far more subtler than the others. Um, I tend to stick with, I tend to stick with style one a lot of times when I want things to stay in line again because that stays right in line. It's a nice half full half, so it really full half full. Sorry, got it backwards. Um, it really really stays uh, in, um, provides a nice tie in. I tend to go to that kind of more plus shape that style five when I have something that's a little more aggressive. Um, I'm going to be doing really long stitches to start out. Um, I'm going through multiple layers of material, uh, maybe 3D foam, something like that where you've got a little bit more that you're trying to deal with. Now, because it makes a plus, it may stick out if you're just um, starting in to do uh, uh, just a walk stitch. You may see that little crossbar start to stick out a little bit. Um, if you have it as a tie off, it may start to pull down in a little bit more. So that's when you might want to think about having a style one instead. So for the most part, I use style one. Style one is my default, um, but I may go in and change that occasionally depending on my application.
All right, the next thing that you have is the width. Um, I tend to start out with a width of seven and a number of stitches I tend to have as three, a nice odd number. It, it does that kind of full, half full kind of thing going on, um, really locks into place. Uh, the nice thing about having a tie off with the number of stitches set to default is it will change the number of stitches depending on the width of your element, the last few stitches that it did. So if you have a wider area, um, you might need a little more aggressive tie stitch, so it will add a few stitches. If it's a thinner area, um, anybody who has tried to rip out small lettering that they spelled the name wrong or something, um, small lettering just does not rip out well. Small stitches don't rip out well. So if you are dealing with something that's very, very thin and very, very small, uh, having the default number with a style one as your tie off, again, that's that last one before a trim, it doesn't need to be as aggressive and it will back off automatically for you based on, again, the width of, of that element. Um, if you put a ton of tie stitches in on something very, very thin, it can start to um, kind of bubble out or, or create a little bit of a dimple um, and show. Okay, so having that default, it'll back off automatically. If it needs to be more aggressive because your elements are a little bit wider or your st stitches are a little bit longer, um, it, it will up that number automatically as well for that. All right, so we've got kind of our properties for our tie stitches. We know that we want them, but now we need to figure out when we want it to tie. And there are a couple of options for that. Uh, in the drop down, you have the option of always or only when necessary. So what does that really mean? Well, always sounds like a really good idea. It sounds like I always want it to tie. I want it to tie in and off. And for this, it would tie in and off on every single element, every walk, every travel, every column, every fill, every everything. Okay, with lettering, that's less of a big deal because it treats the letter like an element. If you were to break that apart into its wireframe elements, then it would treat every element as its own element, and you would start getting a ton of tie stitches. So you might start seeing those. They might start bubbling up. They might have uh, several short stitches really close together. So keep that in mind. I typically will trim on either side of a trim. So when I start sewing, I want it to tie in. When I stop sewing before a trim, I want it to tie off, and I want it to tie off at the beginning and end of the design. So that is only when necessary. So only when necessary sinks a tie stitch at the beginning and end of the design and on either side of any trim that it sees. Be it an auto trim or a manual trim, it will sink tie stitches on either side of that. So that's what I typically use. All right, so let's go in and zoom in and take a look at this. All right, so I totally didn't put that in there. All right, I'm going to choose to tie in, I'm gonna to choose to tie off, and I'm going to hit apply. And did you see this little guy up here? That's my tie stitch. So you can see just a couple of stitches going back and forth over each other. Now, the tie-ins, a lot harder to see because they're getting covered up by those satin stitches. Also notice that because this connector is here, my M is not tying off. So, in the case that you wanted to be trimming this stuff by hand, you might want to change your lettering to always instead of only when necessary because you are eliminating those trims and you're going to do it by hand but you still want tie stitches so that it doesn't unravel when you wash it. If I'm doing it this way and I have it only when necessary I may choose to just add a trim between the M and the E. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do that and we'll see uh, a little tie stitch pop in here. So I'm going to sink a trim, hit apply, and yep we just saw that little tie off appear right here. So because my properties are set to 
tie, uh, sorry, tie in and tie off, and only when necessary, you're seeing those sync on either side of a trim. In this menu, we also have auto trim. So uh, if I had not set this manually in here, hit apply, so now I've got that connector again. If you have uh, lettering or uh, a lot of elements and you want it to trim between them all and it's not currently, this is just saying go ahead and trim when your elements are farther than this amount. So if I have a bunch of lettering and I want it to trim in between them all and it's not currently, I can lower that amount. And now it's trimming automatically and because I'm set to only when necessary, it's doing it on either side of the trim, it is syncing a tie stitch right there. You also have the ability to use auto tie. Um, typically, I don't use auto tie unless I'm planning on trimming things by hand. Um, auto tie just works like auto trim in that it will sync a tie stitch based on how far apart elements are. Um, I prefer to sync tie stitches based on where I'm going to trim instead. So I typically have tie in, tie off, and auto trim all checked. And then I choose my when to tie as only when necessary. Every now and then I will change that to always, but pretty much only for lettering that I'm going to be trimming by hand and I want it to sync tie stitches on, on between every letter. All right. Now we kind of understand what that's doing with our lettering. So let's open up one day.ofm and take a look at that. All right. So if I look at one day.ofm and I right click and I go to properties and I see no tie ins and tie offs, does that mean that it doesn't have tie ins and tie offs? No. That just means that maybe it's an older design and the tie-ins and tie-offs were manually digitized. So before we had tie stitches as a property, um, we manually digitized everything. So we'd take a, a manual stitch or a walk stitch and we'd make a little triangle or make a little plus or whatever that shape may be, and then we would start sewing. Well, one day dot OFM has that. So you don't need to worry about adding tie stitches like that. But how do you know that? Well, you know it by going in and taking a look. All right, so what am I looking at? Typically, I'm going to look at um, the last element of a design. So I'm going to zoom in here, or the last element before a trim. So if I look at this, and I can walk through these points, it goes forward and then back. So it's a tiny little tie. It's like a, a full, full half kind of tie. It's not the same as a style one. It's not too, too different, but it is a tie stitch. Um, so that's where I'm seeing that. And if you show it in 3D, you can even see right here that little tie. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, I like how they did it here in that uh, it does line up with the, the fill direction. So that's really nice. Um, so they may be a little bit harder to see, um, but that's that's how you would notice it. So take a look at those. Um, if if it has tie stitches, what does it matter if you add more? Well, it can again uh, have a bunch of little stitches in one spot that can cause you a thread break if you're not careful. Um, it can start to show on your design as like a little bump or a little dimple. Um, so that's why we try to avoid that. So if you have a design that you see that, um, don't stress too, too much. Just go and take a look. If you need to apply them, you totally can. Um, but if it's already got it, don't stress about it too, too much.